Hello. In this video, I will show you how to prove the following limit with the help of definition of the limit. If you wonder how I found that this limit is a half, I have, I have published solution to this fact. And in fact, I published two different solutions. One of them is based on very elementary technique, like difference of squares. And the other one is a, is a very advanced solution, which is based on Taylor series and Taylor expansions. Both of them are very important for your understanding of limits. So if you haven't watched that, I strongly encourage you to have a look. The links to those solutions, both of them, in the description to this video. But in this video, what I will do, I will use definition of the limit to confirm this limit or to prove this limit. That's a very advanced technique, but if you study limits as a part of your calculus, you have to be able to produce a an argument like this. So what I start off with is with the definition of the limit. It's a very complex thing if you haven't seen it before. And if you haven't seen it before, this example will be a little bit too much for you. You need to start off with the simpler examples. But if you saw the definition of the limit, and if you had some experience with it, then this will be a very challenging but very important and valuable exercise for you. So definition of the limit, it goes like this. For every possible epsilon, which is positive, you have to be able to present a number, m, such that for any x bigger than that number, the function take the limit value in absolute value less than epsilon. Every actual proof which is based on this definition, it, it is focused on the choice of this m value. In every actual proof, you have to present this m value very explicitly. And then, in every such proof, you will need to show that that value m you presented works as intended, meaning that every x bigger than m you presented guarantees this inequality. Normally, when you search for such value of m, you start off with the inequality like this. You change or transform this inequality into something simpler from where you can guess, based on your intuition and experience, what the m value might be. And that's exactly what I'm about to do here. First, I'm going to transform this expression into something more suitable for guessing the m value. And the indispensable ingredient for this transformation will be this identity again, the difference of squares. So have a look what I'm going to do with this expression. Here's my expression. I drop the absolute value, which is irrelevant. In the current, in the current stage of the solution, let's just take the expression itself. That's my function. And half taken away from that. I'm going to apply the difference of squares. I'm going to treat the square root as the a value and the x plus a half as a b value. So what's going to happen is this. This is my difference. This difference. I just combine this x and a half together. So to now you can see it more explicitly that this is my a value and this is my b value. Now I introduce the second factor, a plus b. Here it is. This is my a value, this is my b value with a plus. And now I cancel that to ensure that we have identity. Now we multiply, we, re we replace the enumerator with the difference of squares. Here's the replacement. It's a square of the square root, which cancels square root. This is a square of x plus a half. And my denominator didn't change at this stage. I will need to expand this binomial. We, I hope you remember that binomial expands like this. In the current circumstances where x is a and a half is b, the expansion would take the following form. x squared plus x plus a half. So once you replace this with this expansion, you immediately can cancel x and x squared from here, so the entire enumerator becomes just negative a quarter. Here it is. 
and my denominator didn't change at this stage again. <coughs> so this is my preliminary prep work for the expression which sits here. Let me just recap what's happening one more time. Remember, we need to find M. And like I told you, the idea is what is a suitable choice of M comes after you analyze this inequality. And this prep work is something I did to make my analysis of this inequality easier. So what I will do now, I'll spell out this inequality one more time, and I will point out that this inequality now due to these transitions, equal transitions, is equivalent to the following inequality. I'm replacing this difference with the expression we found here with minor uh, alteration that this quarter is lowered to the denominator and negative is forgotten because absolute value cancel that negative. Now, the next step will be the crucial for identifying the M value, because I'm going to simplify this inequality tremendously. I'm going to drop 2 from this inequality. I'm going to drop 4 square root x squared plus x from this inequality. All what stays is this 4x here. Why do you think I can do so? The reason I can do so, because what I dropped from my consideration is a positive number. So once I remove one positive and another positive number, the expression, the entire expression, reduces to 4x and it becomes smaller. If something becomes smaller, the inverse of that becomes larger. So if this is true, then even more so this is true. This is a key step which allows me to identify M in a very simple way. I would like to point out that what just happened, it's very typical to many proofs of limits which are based on definition. The whole idea is that you sacrifice this equivalence. You see, we no longer have an equivalence on this step. We only have the direction of the arrow to the left. We sacrifice this equivalence, which we don't need, and what we're gaining instead, we're gaining simplicity. So I will solve this a bit further. This is equivalent to mod x being bigger than 1 on 4 epsilon. And then mod x inequalities, they're normally solved like this. It means that x is bigger than 1 on 4 epsilon or x is less than negative 1 on 4 epsilon. Now everything is ready to make a choice for the value m. We've done the prep work, we transformed our very complex inequality which we have no chance of solving exactly. We transformed it in some, something far more simple and this far more simple inequality is easy to solve. So once we've done all of this prep work we can say what the choice of m will be. My choice of m will be 1 on 4 epsilon. That's my choice, and I take responsibility for that choice. Now, I will show you that this choice works as intended. So once you take any x bigger than my choice of m, such x will guarantee this inequality. Once you take x bigger than this m, which means we take x bigger than 1 on 4 epsilon, such x is equivalent to mod x being bigger than 1 on 4 epsilon, which is equivalent to 1 on 4x in absolute value less than epsilon, which implies this inequality and which in turn implies this inequality. And here's my justification for this step. I put here dots which represent this long chain of steps, including this prep work, which leads from this choice of x to this conclusion of the inequality. And that completes my verification of the definition of the limit. Every definition of the limit is structured like this. You have to make a choice of m, and then for x bigger than that m, you have to guarantee that such x ensures inequality. This guarantee, which is behind these two 
steps. It may require a lot of prep work and a lot of massaging and transforming of your inequalities. That's the actual specific content of the every particular example. But eventually, the structure is always the same. You have to make an explicit choice, and for x bigger than that choice, you have to guarantee the inequality is satisfied. And that's a complete presentation. If you think you follow this, or if you think you have any questions or gaps in understanding of this solution, leave your comments below this video. If you would like to see more examples like this, which will boost your understanding of limits, subscribe to my channel. If you would like to see why the limit is exactly half and how this half was found, like I told you earlier, there are two different ways to find that. One is very elementary, based on difference of squares. The other one is based on very advanced method of Taylor series. Both solutions you can find if you follow the links in the description to this video. Thank you, and I will see you in my future videos.